a pretty fish though. Okay, so let me start this off. We're in Fiji. Fiji's beautiful. By the way, we're in this bay and this boat came and anchored like 50 feet from us. Look at that, that's amazing. There's a whole bay. Whoa! Yeah, the only other boat in Fiji anchored right there. But we caught a fish today. We did, it's amazing. We've actually caught a few of these and I think we've forgotten to videotape it. So we thought we'd better share with you what a walu is in Fiji. So, walu is a fish that we've never caught before until we hit Fiji. We catch it in sort of the mid to deep water, uh, inside reefs but still deep, um, and outside reefs but in shallower water. Uh, they're kind of like a wahoo. Let's check it out. Today's fresh catch is a walu. <laughs> a walu is very similar to a wahoo, except it is found in the reefy areas, not on the outside of uh, the reef, like the true wahoo. And its mouth is a bit smaller. It looks very similar on the outside with its uh, tiger markings. It's actually quite greasy. The meat is. The meat is quite greasy, um, like oily. There's a lot of oil on these guys, which is great, but it's nice white meat. The walu is what they serve with the kokoda. Here at kokoda, it's the same as poisson cru. What else is it the same as? Ikamata. They call it all sorts of different things. I'm, lo I'm losing it a bit, but basically it's fish cured in uh, lemon drenched in coconut milk and it's it's actually kind of freaking amazing it is oily though i'll show you once you get to it it's really oily you never got your picture we forgot to get a picture stop so the easiest way to fillet fish is to have a really really sharp knife long enough to cover the width of the body and then you just do a fillet on each side so you start at the tail and you just go along the spine as you're going up once you get to the head up here, you simply cut at an angle down towards it and you got a nice fillet. But some people like to eat the cheeks and the bone in the middle. It's kind of like personal preference. I don't know. So once you have your fillet, the next step is to get the skin off it. You make two more fillets out of this one side. So the easiest way to do that is to simply cut down on either side of the center line and out. You want to be gentle when you're doing this because you don't want to cut through the skin. You just want to cut down to the skin and then angle the knife to cut out. And see you have just the skin left and your nice fillet right here. If it's too long of a fish like this fish, do what I just did with the length of the knife to here. Then you cut, cut that off and you got one fillet. What's a good saying for fishing? Tight lines and... Screaming reels. Screaming reels. There you go. Tight lines and screaming reels. Why is tight lines? Just shut up then. Shut up. <laughs> yeah, I'll say. So anything that was gaffed, we cut out. Anywhere where the intestines leaked into the meat, we cut out. And yeah, any bloodlines, we cut out. Uh, you still have some more trimming to do. There's the... Uh, the belly that sometimes needs to come off. Sometimes the belly is the best part. It just depends on the type of fish you're, you're, you're catching. Sometimes the belly is just seriously just fat. The fastest way to fillet a mahi is super easy. First step, you cut around the outside. On each side, you cut around the very edge. And you're just doing like a slice, like the tip of your knife, so only like about that deep. So I've already cut along here. We're just trying to cut the skin a little bit. We cut up here, and then you cut along the bottom. So the reason for this first step is to simply be able to pull off the skin. Once you pull off the skin, uh, you can then fillet it and then you can get rid of the carcass. So it shouldn't take more than 10 minutes. Let's go ahead and pull off that skin. Start at the front of the fish where you cut and there's a little piece that'll be really loose. Grab that. And sometimes you have to do a little bit of extra trimming just to get it started. So when you're filleting, you basically just want to cut down the center line, that's the blood line, and cut out. And then do the same thing on the other side. So you get two pieces of fillet per side, four pieces in total. Start right here, 
Work your way down the center line. You can flip the fish around. And you just want to cut in from here. So we got our first piece, one of four pieces. You're just cutting really close to the, uh, the bone structure, so you're not leaving much uh, meat on the fish. And you just repeat that three more times and you're done. That's a lot of fish tacos. Wow, it's so beautiful here. Like this water is so turquoise and the beach is so white and the palm trees are so perfect. Go, go look at that, don't look at this. <laughs> making cocota, French Polynesia, they call it poisson cru. But basically everywhere you go, there's a slightly different um, saying for this. But it's, it's a form of cured fish, so you cure it with the lemon and lime juice added into coconut milk. We love these kind of dishes. This is dinner tonight and I'm just prepping it, so. In Fiji, the choice meat that they use is this walu. So this is the walu. It looks a lot like a wahoo. Now, walu is sort of this weird fish that has a lot of like stigma around it because there's like this thing called a white tuna this ugly brownish looking fish that looks something like a tuna and something like a spanish mackerel and they catch it up near hawaii and um in hawaii it can give you like diarrhea it can give you the runs so in fiji the walu does not give you the runs it does not look like the walu that comes up when you google it it is more like a wahoo nice white meat firm meat like the wahoo and uh, it's beautiful in this kokoda, just beautiful. But I, I trim it up, so I take off some of this sort of, uh, after Ben's done, I go and I, I take off more because when you're eating it raw, it's nicer to just have it really tender. Kokoda in Fiji is meant to be made with the walu, which is this, this fish. That's what all the restaurants serve. Um, I think it's because it's so available like we've caught so many walu here in Fiji it's crazy and they're beautiful and it tastes amazing so typically when you are cruising through French Polynesia uh, you'll be getting anything you order that's poisson cru will be the yellowfin tuna in Tonga I'm pretty sure it was yellowfin tuna as well down in New Zealand they have it I think they call it ikamata there probably like a kingfish or something which is even better like oh my gosh kingfish is amazing it's not an amberjack it looks like the amberjacks of other places but it's not it's called the kingfish and it is prime meat for sushi. Step one, catch your damn fish, whatever it might be. Preferably yellowfin is probably my favorite for if you're in New Zealand, kingfish. If you're up here in Fiji, walu. If you're anywhere else in the world, probably a, a snapper would work nice for this as well. Step two, get your husband to do all the nasty bits. Some women like to do it, I don't like to do it. He deals with the stinky fish, then I get it, and then I get to deal with it like this. So then you take it and you clean it up. Step three, clean up the fillets. Step four, chop them into little cubey things. So you got all the ugly bits, all the bloodlines, all the leftover skin bits, it's all gone. Beautiful meat. So it cooks the fish, it gets white, it looks white, chalky white on the outside. Step five, squeeze some lemons, probably about two to three limes, and I mix lime and lemon because I think it's better, I like that. If you don't have one or the other, it doesn't matter, just use all lemon or all lime. Step six. You put it in the fridge, you let it cure for a couple hours. Sometimes they say let it cure for a long time. This you don't have to, it's just like an hour, two hours, whatever time you got. So it cooks the fish, it gets white, white, chalky white on the outside. After that, we pour off the juice that was cooking the fish and we put it into a coconut milk that I just use from a can. So coconut cream, coconut milk, whatever you've got. Then you pour the fish in, then you add the coconut and you just put it, it doesn't matter the order. The order is, it doesn't matter. 
Then you add some chilies, you chop up some chilies nice and fine, you chop up some cucumbers, some tomatoes, you can throw a pineapple in, you can really put anything in this, it's just whatever you feel like it. A little bit of onion, a lot of times in French Polynesia they use the onion, um, cucumbers, tomatoes. Don't forget the chili, it really is better with a little bit of chili, it unsweetens it. And you just kind of go with the flow, man. It's like the best dinner ever. I put two cans in, one can of coconut cream and one can of coconut milk. A teaspoon of fish sauce. I added a lemon and lime to the sauce. And this one I put two chilies in because it was quite, quite a lot of stuff. This is a big bowl, this is a big bowl. This is like a lot. If you're buying fish at home, you probably wouldn't make this much, but we had a big fish today, so we'll eat it for lunch, we'll eat it for breakfast, it's amazing. It, it doesn't go bad in a day, so you can, you can have for leftovers, because the fish is cured, right? It's cooked. So this is a really simple thing to make, really simple. And it is amazing. Like, totally amazing. I only added one and a half chilies, I lied to you. Maybe I should add the other half. Mm. I think it needs another uh, chili. But you gotta be careful when you're out here sailing around the world. I think you buy a scotch bonnet in Canada and then you buy one from a roadside stand somewhere in, I don't know, somewhere in the Caribbean. And all of a sudden, your mouth is on fire, your avocado dip that you just put a little bit in is like almost unedible. Tread lightly, my friends. Taste first. Oh, this is good, man. This is super good, but better than watching us eat. I think you better go outside and watch some of those beautiful. It's dark, but, but, but earlier today, there are some beautiful sunsets, and go watch that, okay? Go. Bye.